Good evening. And yes, you read the title correctly. Welcome to yet another Big D Eagles preview. But wait a minute. Another Eagles preview? How's that even possible? Shouldn't they have lost last week? Weren't they supposed to go one and done this year? Afraid not. The Eagles are in the NFC title game this week. And if we win, we are Super Bowl bound. But make no mistake about it. It's going to be far from easy. We were initially supposed to face the Saints this week. It looked like we were about to... It looked like the Saints were about to be our opponents last week. But the Vikings were in a position to ki potentially kick a game-winning field goal. One of Case Keenum's passes, his last pass. Stephon Diggs caught it over Marcus Williams. Marcus Williams ducked. And either Williams never made contact, either Diggs' knee was down, but he never made contact, or... He made contact, but his knee was not down, but his his hand was down, but his knee wasn't all the way down, and then he just darted off to the races. Either way, Williams missed his tackle big time, and I feel sorry for the guy. I really do, man, because he basically, it, he let his entire team down. The team needed him. I feel really sorry for the guy. I believe the guy disabled comments on his Instagram, and I think he protected his tweets. But either way, the Vikings will be our opponents this week. And neither one of the... I made a debate last week. I made a debate video on who would be the more preferred matchup between the New Orleans Saints and the Minnesota Vikings, where I basically broke down both the offense and the defense, the quarterback rating, the turnover differentials, the defense, how many sacks, how many interceptions, basically broke it down like a fucking science. And most people voted for the Vikings. They voted, yeah, they'd rather face Minnesota. There were some there were a few votes for the Saints. A few guys voted for the Saints. But the Vikings ultimately won not only the debate, the vote, but also the game. And also, there were a few guys that were undecided. Anyway, let me take this hat off. Let me remove my hat and... Let me remove my hat and let me remove my gloves. Let me unglove. Because I'm baking like bacon up in here. I just, I just love that beanie. Anyway. Neither team... Neither matchup was going to be favorable. But guess what? That's what the NFC title game is all about. It's not going to come easy. Both teams are there for a reason. But we, do, but if you think for a second that we don't have a fighting chance, we proved last week versus the Falcons that we, in fact, do have a fighting chance. But like I said, it's going to be far from easy because the Minnesota Vikings do not bullshit. They are fucking ferocious. Especially if we do not capitalize off mistakes that they may make. Anyway... I'm going to go into the statistics to further explain shit. Let me, let's go into the stats right now. All right. What do we got? Like I said, like I've been doing, I'm mainly going to determine the Eagles pass offense. The Eagles did finish with the seventh. I'm just going to go, um, how I'm going to determine the Eagles' offense is like I've done before. I'll just use Nick Foles' passer ratings both in the regular season and the postseason as a bonus. And I'll just say what they're ranked in rush offense. With the Vikings, I'll just do it normally. The, the Vikings are 11th in offense. The Eagles are 4th in defense. The Vikings are numero uno in defense. Number one. Those guys do not bullshit, and if you've watched my debate video when I've broken down each team, I have already talked about how ferocious that defense is. You should see how many sacks those guys have. And their interceptions aren't anything to laugh at either. Not to mention, if you watched the game last week versus the Saints, one of their defenders caught... Drew Brees threw a pass high enough where the corner jumped up and picked him off right in the air. I will determine the Eagles' pass offense. The Minnesota, Minnesota's pass offense is 11th, 
And as far as Philly, as far as Philly goes, I'll go for regular season stats. Nick Foles is his passer rating is 79.5. And as an added bonus, his passer rating in the playoffs so far is 100.1. But anyway, but just for an added bonus, let's look at Case Keenum's passer rating in the playoffs just so we can see exactly what we're going up against. Last week against the Saints, he was 25 for 40, 318, a touchdown and interception. Touchdown percentage was 2.5, as was his pick percentage. He was sacked twice, and his passer rating was 85.2. And the Eagles' rush offense is third. The Vikings' rush offense is seventh. Now let's look at pass defense. Man, my beard itching like hell. Hold on. The The Minnesota Vikings is number two in pass defense, and the Eagles are number 17th. Our pass defense is suspect as hell, and our rushing defense is number one, and the Vikings is number two. So the Vikings have the number one defense with both its pass and rush offenses at number two right across the board. They're not to be fucked around with. So basically, what we would have to do to win is basically beat them at their own game, but at the same time, they could just as easily beat us at our own game. Because this is going to be a defensive battle. Now, one more thing, one more stat I want to bring up is turnover differential, because I always consider it a very important stat. I've already mentioned we're plus 11 in Turnover differential, where ours is plus 11, and the Vikings is plus 5. Now, it's the post. even though we have the advantage in the regular season as far as turnover differential, the postseason is going to be slightly different. Here, let me show you. Excuse me, I feel legit. Oh, here we go. The Philadelphia Eagles are minus two. We turned the ball over twice. When we, yeah, Ajayi had the, he fumbled on the opening kickoff. No, not the opening kickoff, the opening drive. And we also muffed a punt because it hit Brian Brayman. So ours is minus two. The Vikings is plus one. So even though we have the advantage in take, even though we had the turnover differential advantage over them in the regular season, they have the turnover differential advantage over us in the postseason. And right now, the postseason is where it's going to matter. All right, guys to look out for. This is going to be very important. I already told you, Stephon Diggs, he's automatically a guy to look out for. And I already mentioned it. I already mentioned it in the... When the Vikings just won the game, I made a video revealing that the Vikings were going to be our opponents. And I basically said that Stephon Diggs is automatically a guy to look out for because of that game-winning touchdown. I don't give a shit. Now let's look and see who else. Uh, Kyle Rudolph, definitely. Mainly on de the the guys to look out for will mainly be on defense. Everson Griffin, that guy is an animal. 13 sacks and three forced fumbles is nothing to snub your nose at. Danielle Hunter, it's a girl's name, but even though his name may appear feminine, his stats are pretty fucking masculine with seven sacks and one forced fumble. And when you compare that to how many to how many sacks we have, to how many sacks are on defense, the guy that has the most sacks, which is Brandon Graham, ah, oh, Brandon Graham's 9.5. My, while we're at it, we might as well compare some other guys. Fletcher Cox is 5.5. Chris Long's 5. And quite frankly, that's about it. And let Brian Robinson. Basically, that entire defensive line. They're both number two in stopping the run and, pat and defending the pass, like I've mentioned. 
Harrison Smith, Xavier Rhodes. And the sleepers are Case Keenum. I consider him a sleeper. Not necessarily a guy that you would generally underestimate, but at the same time, you really can't count out. Latavius Murray, because he had a pretty good game against, against the Saints. He was eight touchdowns on the season. McKinnon. Dalvin Cook got injured. Not only would we have to worry about Latavius Murray, but we would also have to worry about Jarek McKinnon. Maybe the postseason stats will bring us some more. Yeah, Latavius Murray, definitely. McKinnon, definitely. And on defense, Eric Kendricks. Who else? Anthony Barr because he got that one he got that one pick when Drew Brees threw that long 18 yard pass and he jumped up and got it. Definitely a sleeper. Basically, the guys to look out for is the entire defensive line because I've watched footage of that Saints game. It's going to be an absolute bitch to run the ball on him. And that's one of the things that we would have to do. And that's one of the things that's helped us beat the Atlanta Falcons. But that's going to be less of an option this week. The keys to victory would be take advantage of whatever opportunities are given to you. Pressure the fuck out of Case Keenum. Move the ball consistently on offense. Do what you can. Take advantage of turnovers. If they turn a boat all over, we need to score. And just try to out-sustain him on defense, for the most part. It is not going to be easy. Minnesota, we are once again the underdogs coming into this game. Who do I got winning this? Well, you'll see my answer in the weekly picks. But... I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. Anyway, let me know what y'all think. I'm going to wrap it up right here. Like the bit, subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Let's do this. Let's beat these Minnesota Vikings and let's go to the damn Super Bowl. Y'all have a good one. Good luck because we will fucking need it.